everyone. My name is Arthi Kumar. I'm a product manager at Microsoft for the Teams Shifts application. And today we're going to talk about the Time Clock APIs that we recently released. Um, and so before I kind of go into the uh, APIs themselves, uh, you might be wondering what is Time Clock uh, and what is Shifts? And so I thought I'd uh, give you a little context setting over there um, on what that is. So shifts is a, um, if you're not aware, it's a first party uh, scheduling and time and attendance application on Teams, and it's mainly catered towards frontline workers, but we also do have, um, you know, workers uh, that uh, sit at, uh, primarily sit at a desk. Uh, so IT and information workers uh, tend to use it mainly for if they're, you know, on on-call schedules, uh, but the primary use cases are for frontline workers that work on uh, shifts. Um, Shifts is catered towards the uh, employees, empowering them to manage their schedules on the go uh, using our self-service tools. Shifts is available across all of the team's uh, platforms, so it's available on web, desktop, uh, but it's also available on your mobile interfaces, which is where we find most of um, the frontline workers uh, um, where they live. And then for managers, it saves them a ton of time because we're giving them a lot of autonomy um, to digitize a lot of these uh, workflows that they traditionally might use pen and paper or Excel spreadsheets to manage their schedules. Uh, a lot of times you'd still find that in a lot of big organizations. So this just provides them an easy way to automate all of that. Um, the time tracking uh, component, which is uh, the time clock module within the Shifts application, that's the API that we've, uh, we're have we going to be talking about today and that we uh, have shipped. Um, that provides um, employees uh, quick clock in and clock out capabilities so they can clock in and out of their shifts. Uh, they can add uh, breaks. They can go back in and edit their time cards and use all of that. And then the manager can view that um, and then uh, push that to their payroll system uh, for payroll processing. And with our APIs, uh, we have uh, we, we've got a ton of uh, already available uh, released graph APIs for most of these scheduling for all of the scheduling capabilities. The time tracking component is the last one uh, that we have released recently. And uh, usually we find that this to be um, mostly uh, an integration with uh, a third party workforce management system. So you may have your customers may be working um, on existing systems of records such as Kronos or Blue Yonder, Reflexus, SAP, ADP, Ceridian, uh, Workday. I'm just throwing out a few of the big names. We do support a few connectors uh, for some of these um, workforce management systems, uh, but and all of them are powered through the graph APIs themselves um, that we're going to talk about. Uh, but you know, this is uh, they're they're open APIs for you to be able to uh, to use to your needs. And lastly, uh, Shifts is used by over millions of users today, um, so we're seeing uh, a lot of positive uh, growth in the space. Um, I wanted to kind of quickly talk through what the Shifts application itself looks like uh, and maybe walk through some of the um, time clock scenarios that you might want to enable when you use the, what, basically what does an integration look like when you use the uh, time clock APIs. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on what the integration might look like for some of the scheduling capabilities just because the focus of uh, today's demo is on the time clock component of the Shifts application itself. So for managers, um, I have um, a, an image over here that shows the desktop and the mobile view. Um, they can, uh, you can, you know, let's say you're using an Excel spreadsheet, you can import um, your schedules if you're using that um, and then export it back out. Um, we also uh, have the ability for you to directly build your schedules within the Shifts app. Um, but of course, we have graph APIs as well, where you can import it um, and sync any scheduling information if you're already using it in another uh, system of record. You can, as a manager, you can, let's say you need extra shifts for the day uh, that you need some employees to come in and cover. Uh, you can create open shifts. Uh, you can also manage all of your employee requests within uh, the application itself. 
For the frontline worker, you um, the the mobile interface is a little bit more catered towards towards the frontline worker um, and their experience, mo mostly because uh, you know they're on the they're either on the shop floor or on the um, on the you know processing line. So they're typically on the go um, and uh, they're usually on some sort of mobile interface. Um, you can view your own schedules, you know, what's upcoming. Let's say you're working across multiple uh, locations. Uh, you work for a retail store and there are multiple branches that you work across. You can see all of your shifts across those different store locations. Um, you can see any, you know, if you want to make a few extra bucks, uh, you can pick up extra open shifts. Uh, you can manage your requests. You can request time off or uh, if you want to swap your shift, you can't make your shift. Uh, you want to swap it with another employee uh, and make sure that, you know, you give up your shift, but it's also being covered by someone who can take up that shift based on whatever skills that are required for the shift or making sure that they don't go over time. Uh, you can do all of that within the shifts app. Um, and then the time clock component is um, is the other part. Um, that uh, facilitates an employee to be able to clock in and clock out um, so you can uh, you can start your you, you know you can start your shift basically clock in and clock out you can also start a break uh, you can start multiple breaks um, and stop them um, and then let's say that you forgot to you know you worked um, uh, today from eight to five but you took a a couple of short coffee breaks and you forgot to punch in for one of them, uh, you can go back in the next day or, or you know, even after you clock out and go back and edit your uh, time cards. And then eventually, once you're happy with uh, your timesheet, you can confirm um, that so that the manager will then be able to process that for payroll. Time clock is available uh, on, on the mobile interface as well as on um, the desktop. Um, in some uh, in, in some industries, uh, they don't, or even some organizations do not provide uh, employees, um, you know, work tools on their personal devices, or they don't provide them with any shared devices. And so, a lot of times, employees need to come in uh, to clock into their shift. Um, and so, there was asks on, you know, we need to support this on 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 desktop as well. And um, and so, we did recently last year. Um, ship the time clock capabilities within the, the, the desktop and web view. So what does it look like to um, integrate your payroll and time and attendance system? So your SAP or Ceridians uh, of the world um, with uh, shifts being the front end uh, application within Teams uh, where your employees would clock in and clock out and manage their time and attendance. I'm going to walk you through a few uh, scenarios, um, things that we find most common, commonly um, used, uh, but that isn't to say that you can't expand this to uh, other scenarios that you see fit. So um, a typical scenario, you know, a worker um, comes into their shift, uh, they, they pull up the Teams application, um, scroll to the Shifts app, within that, um, and then I've highlighted over here uh, the time clock component within the shifts application. And so let's say you've already integrated shifts using our now our, our time clock APIs um, to your payroll system. Um, when the uh, when the worker clocks in, um, if you've uh, registered to the webhook API, um, shifts will then automatically sync that back to the payroll system via your application. So um, we do support um, real time synchronous changes um, on uh, or notifications on any changes that are made within shifts. Similarly, let's say that um, a worker goes back in and needs to edit their time card. Um, so they'll go back into the time clock module. Uh, they'll find the, the time card that they uh, want to edit. They'll go ahead and make all the edits and then um, all of that. So we we support for every action within the within shifts, really, but but specifically within time clock in this specific scenario. Um, we support um, we, we we support the crowd operations, but we also support those uh, web hooks so that so that any changes that are made by the user in real time, you'll get notified um, and gets auto synced. And this is, in fact, we've had customers who've uh, waited 
uh, for that webhook component uh, uh, to be released before they could they could start integrating the time clock um, capabilities with their payroll system, simply because. You know, uh, what we've heard is that, you know, it, it's a lot of manual work for an employee to have to clock in and clock out uh, in one system. And then the manager needs to keep track of what they uh, clocked in and clocked out um, and kind of have that communication with the with the user offline um, and ensure all of their timesheets are accurate and then go in and manually punch it versus um, having this automated. Right. So there's no confusion. Um, there's no room for human error. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's room for, I guess, technical <laughs> errors, but um, it, it, so, you know, that that just automates it and makes uh, everyone's life a lot easier. So like I like I mentioned, we already have a full suite of Graph APIs supported for all of your shifts scheduling capabilities and I have a snapshot over here. I actually couldn't get the full snapshot because I had to scroll. Um, but basically, if you go to the, the graph document, um, the docs page, um, and you look at the V1 uh, version, uh, when you scroll down to teams, under teams, there will be shifts. Um, and that's basically your repertoire of all of the shifts APIs that we support. Um, and you can see all the different entities that we support. Uh, and if you if you expand on each of those, you'll see all of the different uh, APIs that we support for each of those entities. And um, for the time clock component of it, um, so just like you see on the left-hand side, shift, schedule, scheduling, group, so on and so forth, if you scroll down past time off, um, you'll see what I show on the right-hand side, which is the time card um, entity, and then that, that's the expanded view where you're, you're seeing the time, co time card resource. Um, and then all of the different APIs and operations that we support on that entity. So we do support, um, you know, your basic uh, CRUD operations, read, writes, uh, deletes, list, views. Uh, but we also support uh, specific actions that uh, a, you can you can perform on behalf of that user. So um, you can clock in, you can clock out, start and stop a break, uh, and you can confirm um, the timesheet. So I wanted to give a quick view of uh, what the time card resource would look like. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to read through all of the properties, but you can kind of see um, that we do support all of the um, all of the fields that you would see. And it's basically a, a represent representation of what you would of what a user would see on the user interface. So um, it's fully supported that way. Uh, we also, on all of our APIs, uh, but I wanted to specifically call this out, uh, we do support both uh, user delegated permissions as well as app permissions. Um, and, and so this is also on the uh, documentation page, uh, which if you scroll, you'll see. Um, and for the for for the application permissions, we do require uh, you to pass in a header, um, and I have it at the bottom over here. Um, it's the MS app acts as header, and uh, what you would pass over there is the user ID uh, on behalf of whom the application is uh, making this request. Without which, you will uh, you will get thrown an error. Um, and so I just wanted to make that call up. So, so that's uh, something that you don't miss. And lastly, like I mentioned, the webhook capabilities. Um, uh, there is a so it's it's a webhook API that you can register uh, against. Um, and it's specific to the shifts application. So this is only within the shifts capabilities that you would uh, get notified of any changes that a user makes. Um, it's the it's called the workforce integration API. It's a bit of a confusing name if you're not fully in uh, if you're not aware of what a workforce um, a workforce system is. Uh, but the name the reason we gave that is basically because you can register your application as an integration between two workforce systems, um, shifts being one, and um, what we would imagine that you're integrating with is another workforce management system. And that's why it's called the Workforce Integration API. Um, and so that this API is exclusively a webhook API where you can register your integration. You'll get back like a, um, a uh, integration ID for, for that specific instance of the integration. But let's say that you have 
you know, two um, instances of Kronos, one in Europe, where your customers, um, you know, the customer has one region in Europe, one region in the US, and they have two different um, instances of Kronos they're running against, um, and they have different configurations, you know, um, the Europeans maybe don't really care about swap requests, um, and uh, the US do. Um, and so you can have two sets of integrations that uh, are configured slightly differently. Um, and so you would use the Workforce Integration API to register your integration um, twice um, as two separate instances, even though they're running basically on the same code and you would just configure it a little differently. And um, the, the supports property on the Workforce Integration uh, API, um, there is so there's a there's a lot of different values that we support. Um, basically, all of the different entities that you can listen for changes on, um, and the most recent one that we have added uh, is the time card uh, that I've highlighted over there. That is specifically the uh, the value that you would use when you want to um, listen for any changes that are made within the Shifts app uh, on the time clock module. And then I have a screenshot of, um, you know, the uh, of an example of what the call would look like from Shifts when you've when you've registered with the workforce integration um, for time card. So any clock in clock out changes that a user makes, um, there's there's request uh, examples uh, of what that would look like from Shifts. So you know um, how you need to uh, receive that uh, that request and handle it appropriately. And I think that's all I had. Um, I don't. I don't know where, where if we're at time or if we have some time yeah, for questions. Yeah, we, but we are on time. But if there's any questions, um, people can ask them in the chat, and you can we can follow up on that. But let me then thank you, RT. Really good coverage, and I, I like the fact that we showed some business scenarios what we can build using this and because that always helps some people understanding not just the technical API but rather okay what can I do with the API which is a really really big part of that thank you for that one mm -hmm.